Now we're ready to um, answer the question, like how can you extract electro electrical energy from a redox reaction? And before we talk about this, I'd like for you to remind you that I wanted you to look at that Pogel voltaic cell activity so you can have a little experience with this uh, before we start talking about it. And then this should just be a review of what you have just accomplished on your own by doing that activity, Pogel activity that is. So um, in this type of uh, electron transfer that we're talking about here, um, we're talking about a spontaneous electron transfer. And anytime you have a spontaneous electron transfer, that is uh, a chemical change in which electrons are transferred and the chemical change itself is spontaneous. You bring the reactants together and the reaction goes. That's what we mean by spontaneous. In those cases, energy is going to be given off. And um, so, for example, in this particular reaction, we're going to look at this. This is a uh, redox reaction and um, and energy is, is given off because it's spontaneous. So I want you to look at this picture, um, these two pictures, and we're going to write a reaction based on what's going on in the picture so we can understand what this idea of spontaneous uh, electron transfer means. In this case, if you have a beaker and you have in the beaker a solution of a copper 2 sulfate, a copper 2 sulfate solution, um, copper 2 sulfate, as you know, is ionic, and so that means that if it's in solution, What's existing in the solution are copper ions and sulfate anions floating around, of course, right? Because it's aqueous. It's in solution. That means aqueous solution. And, and you stick into that solution a zinc rod. So this is um, the element zinc uh, in this rod. Well, what happens shortly after you put that zinc rod um, in that copper 2-sulfate solution is the zinc rod starts to be eaten away and you get a, which there's like divots in the zinc rod, and then you get a precipitation of copper falling out onto the, um, the floor of the beaker. Okay, and so given these conditions, um, let's try to write a chemical reaction based on what's going on. So on this side, this, this is the reactants here that we've put together, and this is the result of the reaction, this is the products. Okay, so what we have, the reactants here, you've got zinc, metal, that's one of your reactants, and then you have copper sulfate solution, that's another reactant right here. You're mixing them together, a chemical reaction is occurring, and the products, can you figure out what the products are just by, by, by reading these words? Well, precipitation of copper, here we have copper ion in solution, precipitation, precipitate of copper indicates that the copper is now in the elemental form, and then the zinc metal is getting um, eaten away. Where is it going? It's not disappearing. It is going um, into solution from the zinc itself into zinc ion. It's dissolving away into solution. It's, it's not gone. You just can't see it because it's dissolved in solution. And we also have sulfate in that solution. We, and we probably still have some copper ions and whatnot in the solution as well. But, but the important thing is the product then is zinc sulfate. Okay, the aqueous. Alrighty, so this is a spontaneous reaction. When I put these two reactants um, together, I'm going to have an oxidation reduction reaction where the zinc is going to be oxidized and the uh, copper is going to be reduced. Okay, so we have the oxidation of copper. This is going to be oxidized and the copper here, ion, is going to be reduced to copper metal. Alrighty, so when this reaction occurs, it's spontaneous, it's electron transfer because it's a, um, a reaction, excuse me, a redox reaction, and literally the electrons from this um, zinc are going to be transferred to the copper ion, and we end up with a product of, of copper metal. Okay, um, and so uh, it's spontaneous, energy is given off. If I had a thermometer, that I stuck down in here with these reactants, I would see that the temperature goes up a little bit um, and a little bit of heat is given off. Heat given off. It's an exothermic reaction. Okay, um, So that's an example of an exothermic uh, spontaneous electron transfer type reaction. Of course, it's not the first one we've seen. We see these types of electron transfer spontaneous reactions going on all around us. Anytime you burn a fossil fuel, you remember it's a redox reaction and heat is given off. It's exothermic. 